Hello and welcome to my channel. So, today let's make some ice cream. Again, I have to say that I am not really a, a modeler or a, a good modeler. There are some way, way better modelers than me, but Cinema 4D gives me the tools that I need to create something like this. So, let's first create a cube and make it the proper size of an ice cream. I think it's around 12 centimeters high. So let's place it onto the bottom and then we need to get a reference image. Place it into the back of our front view, scale it down and just make it fit that cube. That's good. So now we can delete the cube and let's place in a rectangle. We need to fit the size. This is going to be the, the ice cream itself, or the chocolate and the ice cream in this case. Just play around with the width and the height and make it round. Give it some radius so that it just fits the shape. So thing is now that uh, the tip is a little bit narrower than the bottom so we can insert a taper into the rectangle and play with the strength. And as you can see This looks really good. We extrude it and of course it's way too thick. The offset should be yeah, around about two centimeters. That's good. It's looking good so far. Now let's give it some caps, make it a little bit, make it roundish basically. Caps are way too big. Play with the size. Also, now we can reduce the offset. And I think this is looking good so far. So now for the for the wooden part for the bottom, we could we can what we can do is we can duplicate the rectangle and yeah, upper the transparency of the background so with the, so that we can see it better. Lower the width. And also the height. And now you can see that the image is not perfectly centered, but that doesn't matter. And now let's give it a bulge. And if we play with the bulge now, as you can see, it squishes it down in the middle, but not as expected. And that's because uh, we need to change something in the rectangle itself. We need to change the intermediate points to something like subdivided. And now you can see it perfectly follows the bulge. And now let's lower the strength. Also give it an extrude. Yeah, one centimeter is probably, and we can even lower that down. Yeah, this is looking better now. Let's place it into the center of the ice cream. And now we have the basic shape. It's that easy actually. But we are of course not finished yet. Now there is a thing that uh, this chocolate is melting down. Now, first of all, let's rename it. This is our handle and the upper part, call it ice. Now there is this chocolate melting down onto the handle and we want to uh, mimic that. What we can do is, um, uh, we're gonna duplicate our existing um, 
extrude that we already did and put this ice cream into a volume builder and also the handle, a duplicate, a duplicate of the handle basically. And what this does is that it basically melts it together. As you can see here, we get this organic form. Mm -hmm. This is good, but we don't need the whole thing, of course. We just need the ice cream itself and the until it stops on the on the handle, of course. So nice trick. We can go ahead and do a sketch. Just draw a line. And I'm gonna smooth it. And then um, can go into the points mode and connect these points together. Just make sure that everything, that it covers the whole area where we want to cut, cut out something. Hmm? So extrude it again. It's again way too big, so lower it. And place it between this uh, melted chocolate thing and put it into the volume builder. And in the volume builder, you can change it from union to subtract. And uh, this is what we are getting now. So if we enable the hand, the original handle, yeah, uh, yeah, and we play with the voxel range threshold of the volume measure, yeah, we get this and this is exactly what we want. So uh, this is a very organic looking chocolate thing, <laughs> so to say. But we're still not there. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give it some mm, some irregularities, some uh, some displacement, so to say. So we place a displace modifier onto the volume measure and give it a noise. So right now it's going completely bonkers, but that's because the height is way too strong. Put it down to maybe something like that, maybe, and the shading. In the shading, the, the global scale is way too high. If we lower that to 2%, we get something crispy. Yeah, that's not what we want. We want it a little bit bigger, but not as big as we had it before. So uh, let's upper it to maybe something like this. Yeah, and as you can see, this is adding some organic form. It's 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 eyes. It's not it's not. Uh, um, yeah, it's not fabric, but this is, it has to have some irregularities in it, okay? The handle is too thick, you can lower that, of course, place it in there. Also, um, I gave it some caps. So for the textures now, uh, there are actually two sites where you can download free textures. The first one is Texture Haven, and the other one is uh, the CC0 textures. Uh, what I want to search is for imperfections. So like smudges or stuff like that. Uh, I couldn't find those in Texture Haven, but in on this site, on cc0textures.com, I found some stuff. Yeah, something like that, for example. And uh, or something like this also. And those textures are free, and um, I will uh, provide you uh, the whole stuff onto my uh, Google Drive. You can download that. Um, now fire up Octane, give it some samples, lower the GI clamp to make it a little bit less noisy. We are in path tracing mode, by the way, and uh, I'm adding a uh, HDRI. I think uh, I tried it first with this one, but I changed my mind later on. You will see. So I want to get rid of the background. So what we can do now is add a text texture background, but add, uh, change the type to visible environment. So it keeps the original lighting from the HDRI, but the background is yeah not visible anymore. So I created a, a composite material, put it onto the chocolate or the eyes, or whatever. Um, in the material, changed it to uh, universal, 
and the PRDF model to Beckman. And now for the color, I just gave it some chocolate color. Maybe a little bit darker. Yes, it's looking good. Yeah, and now I changed the HDRI. Uh, there's this other side, um, it's called HDRI Haven. Uh, this is where I got this HDRI from. I will provide everything in my um, download link. So I imported the surface imperfections. This is the normal map and I connect it to the normal. Yeah. And as you can see right away, it gives me some good results. But the uh, projection is off, so um, we can uh, correct that inside of Octane with the transform and texture projection node. Um, I played around a little bit with it, but um, yeah, since this is a uh, volume mesh, a mesh built out of a volume, um, it doesn't have those correct uh, UVW uh, coordinates, which makes it um, pretty hard to to work with. Um, yeah, it's not it's not unwrapped, let's put it like that. So as you can see here right now, this is like strangely centered. So um, there is a workaround for that, which I will show you in a second. Yeah, as you can see here on the, on the right side, or basically over the side, we get these weird stretchings and we don't want that. So there's a, but again, as I said, there is a workaround and a pretty good one actually for that. And this is when we change it to triplanar projection. And so we need this node, this triplanar node, and we need to connect the image texture to all of those uh, coordinates. It's projecting from every angle and blending the texture together. It's pretty, it's crazy, it's really good. And uh, yeah, we're doing the same thing uh, then uh, with the normal, but first uh, let me change the transform scaling of this whole thing. Duplicate the triplanar node now and uh, yeah, just connecting it. Also change the protector mode to triplanar, that's important, and connect it to the normal map. And now everything should look fine. Uh, we need to uh, we need to have some material also for the handle, and that's um, yeah, that's basically a wood. So I download this wooden texture. Connected to the albedo and the normal map as well. There's also a roughness material and a displacement material. We don't need the displacement, but um, yeah, just. Uh, for you to know that they're also there. You could work with displacement, but in this case, we don't need it. Now here we go ahead and change it to box projection. And uh, yeah, right now it's pretty big. So we're gonna scale it down and we're gonna rotate it. I want the, mm, the lines going from up to down. Also, it's a little bit too glossy. I changed the specular, reduced it. Also the power of the normal map. I wasn't happy with the color, overall color of the wooden texture, so um, I plugged in a color correction node between the image texture and the node itself and uh, yeah. 
So now to the uh, this byte out. This is interesting. So uh, make a current state to object to the ice material, yeah, which gives me this mesh. Doesn't have to calculate everything over and over again. And we do the same trick we did before with the sketch. So we just draw a line where we want to cut out basically the chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's good. We don't even have to smooth it. Um, and put this into an extrude. Yeah, change the offset. Something like this. Okay. Yes, this is good. So now, let's put this one into a, a bool and the eyes and the extrude as well. So what we get is this. This is obviously not really what we want. We only we only want the chocolate, but the chocolate is there right now. It's it's solid. Yeah, it's uh, not what we want. The trick is that uh, we have to give the eyes a. Um, a cloth, some thickness, basically. We don't need subdivisions, but we need the thickness. And now, if we enable the bool, you will see that this happens. This is good. And now we have uh, this uh, th chocolate uh, surrounding. Yeah, Put this into a volume builder. Uh, the voxel size is too big. Put it to 0 0.05. Yeah, that's good. And also into a mesher. Very nice. Play with the voxel range threshold. Um, there is one problem now that you will see shortly. Yeah, and these are these holes here, and this is because of the bool. The bool is right now uh, because it's cutting out. It's not cleanly. Yeah, well, it's cleanly cutting out, uh, but uh, there are. It's having some problems. Also, there is this issue down there, but uh, this one could be corrected with a, some sculpting or stuff like that. Um, yeah, if we change the uh, bool to um, to regular quality or not high quality, those um, issues disappear, interestingly. Okay, and now we can re-enable the measure and the, the builder and the measure, and everything is good. So we put on the material onto it, and this is what we get. Awesome. So we need the the ice cream now. The filling. And it's also very interesting because, um, let's see, uh, duplicate it. Because everything is basically already here, what, what we can work with. If we disable the, the cloth and we get this uh, solid thing, okay, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the whole trick. I mean, right now it's intersecting each other because the, uh, they're lying and on top of each other, but if we play with the voxel range of the other volume measure, you can see that we can thinen it. Okay, that's good. So for the texture, we have this fluffy um, ice texture. So there's also a snow texture in this uh, on this side. Uh, I downloaded that one, created a universal material, put this uh, onto uh, the cream. Okay, and. I imported the the displacement texture of this snow thing, and uh, yeah, we can connect this to the displacement node, and it's going crazy right now because the settings are way too high. The height is set to 10 centimeters on the displacement. If we lower that to 0 0.1, you can see that uh, it's getting better, yeah, but it's still too high. 0 0.05, maybe even lower see yeah that's better okay so as you can see again the uh, projection is way off we have to change that uh, let's put it to cubic and uh, scale down the texture with a uh, with this uh, um, a texture tool in, in, in uh, or this U UVW tool in C4D. Scale down this cube. So you can see it's this is the projection itself actually. And uh, okay. 
can rotate it and all those lines slowly disappear. It's still not perfect yet. As you can see, we have these problems at the bottom. Yeah. So what we can do here is, uh, first of all, uh, we can delete everything that's not necessary. Because right now the displacement is affecting the whole ice cream, but we only need the top. Yeah, we don't need the filling to be displaced uh, because we can't see it anyway. So with the uh, Fong Break Selection tool, I'm selecting uh, only those uh, polygons that are facing a certain direction. And I'm going to invert the selection now. And now I'm going to delete this. So we only have this top. That's uh, the only thing that we need. So uh, I changed the projection also to flat. Um, rotated it. And uh, this gives me a better result, actually. We'll see that in a second. It just projects smoother onto the image texture. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's going to scale it down. Disable the node now and uh, we can already see that uh, it's looking much better now. In the displacement I can upper it now. Let's put it to 0 0.1. Uh, yeah, that's good, but right now it's sticking out. So uh, we have this... Uh, first of all, let's uh, upper the level of detail. This is a 2K texture. And change the mid-level of the whole displacement itself. If we upper it, it goes... shrinks in, so to say. And that's looking pretty good. I mean, we have some errors here we could fix by cleaning it up even more, but it's okay for uh, for some other shots. So um, last step is to give it a, a little bit of a subsurface scattering. Put in the flow texture into the transmission. And uh, when I lower the albedo, you can see that, uh, yeah, there is something happening. But uh, it's better to place in an RGB spectrum into the transmission and play with the color a little bit more. You can see that you can get some very gross looking uh, stuff with it, but uh, I want to give it a, a slightly yellow touch. That's good. Now uh, in the albedo, crank it up. Also, said maybe a little bit of a yellow would be fine. Just the slight. Uh, that's maybe too much. Lower it down. That's good. Okay, and that's it for the ice cream itself. Now uh, we want to give it also, we want to create also those. Um, um, shattered parts, so to say. Good thing is that we have everything we need now. Um, duplicate the chocolate, okay, and uh, change the uh, Boolean operation from A subtract B to A intersect B, and you will shortly see that we get the others the other way around, okay. Uh, very good. Um, and uh, now. We want to put this one into a uh, Voronoi fracture, which automatically uh, fractures everything. We can play a little bit with the offset fragments. And also give it some irregularities in the uh, detailing. Yeah, and I took those parts and arranged them by hand so that it... I made this illusion of this uh, exploding chocolate... of this uh, of this chocolate explosion, some kind of, if you want to see. 
So that's my ice cream tutorial. I hope you had fun. If so, um, give me a like, follow me, comment, and uh, I see you next time. Bye.